In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this little pig in an ocean. But also, we're going to be taking a look at what Mary stems are and what micropropagation is. So right here, we have a little plant, okay? It is rooted in the, so in the soil. We can see all of its little roots. It's got leaves. It's got a stem. Um, all the basic things that we know. Now, what we don't know is what a Mary stem is. Or maybe you do, but this is not as common to know about. So a Mary stem is essentially, um, in simple words, any place on the plant where growth can occur from, any place that can do meiosis to be able to promote growth, okay? So here's the word form of that. Now, there are three types of Mary stems, okay? Three different ones. Let me show you. There's something called the apical Mary stem. So that's this one here. It's the one at the very top of the stem. Okay, this one, when it grows, it's going to grow upwards. It's going to cause the plant to increase in height. Okay, um, let me show you this. So here we go. I'm going to highlight it in color so we can see clearly. Okay, so here it is. This is the apical meristem. The apical meristem is not only at the top of the stem, but it's also at the bottom of the root. Okay, growth so both of these places, both of these meristems are capable of growth. So let me make this clear. Um, specifically, capable of growth in height. Let me show you. So the growth in the main stem, so this one here, will grow in height. It will make the plant be able to be taller. What is the purpose of being taller? The purpose of being taller is to be able to get closer to the sun, to be able to do more photosynthesis. Because for example, say you are next to um, another plant and he is bigger than you and he's shadowing the sun. So you can't get enough sun because it's he, the plant next to you is covering the sun from you. If you have a, um, when the apical meristem decides to grow in height, maybe you can become taller than that plant next to you and get more sun and to be able to do more photosynthesis, okay? So that's one important reason for the apical meristem. Like I said, the apical meristem is also in the root. Why? This is for depth, so that the root can grow deeper and deeper and branch into the soil, so that it can get all the nutrients possible. Because if you're, again, located next to another plant, which also has roots, it's stealing some of your resources. So if you have um, a good apical meristem in your root, you can grow deeper and find um, uh, materials better than the other plant. So now next, intercalatory meristem. That is this one, okay? It's located around here in the plant, okay? It's this area here. Um, this one causes growth of leaves and branches, okay? So it doesn't cause height or depth. It rather causes branches and twigs to grow, okay? So it causes like more branching. That's what it causes. This helps to repair your leaves and make them grow. Um, we're going to get into one other interesting thing. Maybe we'll get into it now. So let's say, okay, so we've covered now the apical and the intercalatory mer meristem. Now, if I were to cut this plant right here, that would mean it has no, it has no, what do you call it? It has no apical meristem. So it's this, it's disappeared. So now it only has an intercalatory meristem. So when you cut off the apical meristem, now the plant will only grow from the uh, intercalatory meristem. So the, the intercalatory meristem will become the new stem. So now the growth will happen from here. Okay, do you notice? So now this will become the new stem. Okay, growth will have to happen from here because there's no more apical meristem. Okay, now let's get back to the last one, lateral meristem. So this one is the most complicated one. Let me show you here. It is located in the, sorry, I'm having trouble clicking this. It is located in the um, stem, okay? So not near the top, not near the branching points, but in the stem, and it has a special job. Remember how the apical meris meristem cause height and depth and this one caused branching. This one causes, can you guess what? This one causes growth in width. So it makes the stem thicker, stronger, okay? 
Um, this is called secondary growth. So primary growth is growth in height. Secondary growth is growth in width. Okay, now let me show you a picture of this one because this one might be a bit confusing. So if we zoom into here, we're going to look at the structure of the stem. Okay, so we're zooming into here. I've done this in a previous video, but notice what happens is um, when these meristems, these, these lateral meristems, okay, lateral meristems, when they grow, they will grow thicker and stronger, okay? So what I mean is in width. So instead of going up or down, it's going to get thicker, okay, in width. Now, let's get on to micropropagation. Micropropagation, let's break down the word and it should make sense. Micro means very small. Propagation means um, basically growth or duplication. So small and then duplication. How does this make sense? Let me show you. So let's say we want to make another plant without having a seed. What we're going to do is we're going to take this apical meristem, okay, because it's got growth potential, right? We know it grows in height from here. If we take that and we put it into a test tube, so a test tube is like a little um, glass, okay, that they use in labs. If we take that and we put it into a test tube, and this test tube has all the right ingredients, like agar, agar is like a gel, this gel has things in it like sucrose, which is useful for energy. It's got minerals. That's also very important um, for a lot of um, functions of, the, of growth and also hormones. Okay, If we have all these ingredients, specifically plant hormones and some other things that I didn't mention here because you don't need to know about them now. If we have all of these and we put our apical meristem in and we let it, uh, let it and we give it some time, what will happen is this apical meristem will start growing, okay? And it will become this weird-like thing, okay? And this weird-like thing, this growth, is basically, um, it, has, it has the ability to become a plant, okay? So it starts off with the apical meristem, it grows and it clusters together, um, becomes bigger. At this point, what scientists can do is either wait for it to become a plant, because this has the right ingredients to become a plant, and then they can take that plant and put it in the soil and allow it to grow and become big. Basically put it in the soil like this, right? Now become a, can come a, become a big plant over time. Or they can be smart and instead right here, take this, divide it up many times and put it into 20 different test tubes, allowing 20 different plants to, be, to grow at once, okay? Because this right here is the ingredient for plants to, to be formed. This here is not enough. You need a whole meristem. But once they form this, you can split this up and make many plants grow at once in many different test tubes. Now, what's the purpose of micropropagation? The purpose of micropropagation, so now it makes sense. Micro because you need a very small bit to be able to propagate and make a lot of plants. Okay, micropropagation. Why is this useful? This is useful for many reasons, including um, with rare and endangered species. Sometimes there's a plant that's about to die out. And so you want to make more of it. So this is a good method to make more of it without waiting for nature to do it. Secondly, maybe there are some plants that you really want to grow, but it's so hard to grow. It takes, um, it, it really is hard to allow it to survive in nature. It, there, it, it, it's not endangered, but it takes a long time. It's really difficult to allow it to grow. So then you can use this mechanism to make more of it in a, in a more controlled science way because you can you can ensure that the ingredients are there you can ensure that that there's a good environment for the specific plant to grow and lastly for example say you're a farmer and you have a lot of plants and you notice this one plant is surviving no matter what's going on if there's many diseases in the field this plant survives this plant is disease resistant whereas all your other plants keep dying what you can do is be smart wait wait, wait a second is you can take that plant and propagate it because if that plant's resistant, it's micro. If you do micro micro propagation with it, the plant that is formed later should also be strong and resistant because it is a clone. It is the same plant, right? It's from the same plant, same genetics. So in this way, you can save money and time because you know all your plants will survive. In that way, you can save money. You don't have to keep buying new things, keep buying new ingredients. And um, time, because you know that they won't die, so you won't have to keep growing new plants. So that is it for micropropagation and meristem.